Welcome back everybody to Make Share Daily where you go to get your daily builds. And today we're gonna continue our tutorial with the FLL or EV3 Mindstorm Robotics Kit. And today we're talking about this. It's the touch sensor. If you have a robot that might run into a wall, you're gonna to wanna to use this touch sensor to acknowledge where the wall is and then do an action like back up after it hits the wall. So we're gonna go through a tutorial of how to program the touch sensor when it hits the wall and what to do next. Another scenario is if you want to start the robot via a touch sensor. So if you have the robot sitting at home base and you want it to start going, but only after it, you hit it, hit the button, then you can utilize that touch sensor for that reason as well. So we'll go over that tutorial as well. But first, we're gonna go back to the original purpose of the touch sensor is the bumper. When you run into a wall, what do you do? And how does the robot react when it hits that wall? So the first thing we're going to do is open up our EV3 Home Edition program. So as you can see, we have here the start button. We are going to add what is known as a loop. So that's in the orange section of flow control. So you want to go in here and add a loop. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a drive command. So this means that it's going to drive forward by one, one second. If it runs into a a wall, you're going to want to acknowledge it through the touch sensor. So you want to click on, let me show you that again, instead of unlimited, you're going to go here, touch sensor, state. So now you can see here it selects one. Well, what does one mean? Well, you click on one and it gives you three states. The first one is released, which is the current state, unpushed. This is pressed when you press the button. And the third is bumped when you press and release the button. That's important. We will show you how bumped is appropriate for when you're trying to start the robot and use that as a start button. But when you hit the wall, it's only going to press in. So we want to use pressed as the state to change our loop. So it's going to move forward until it's pressed, correct? Then we need to give it a second action. For when it does get pressed, what do you want to do? That action is gonna be placed outside of the loop, not inside the loop, not around the loop, not in conjunction or in parallel to the loop, but in series to the loop. So it's downstream of the loop. Whenever it gets pressed, it will come out of the loop. When it's done with that loop, it comes out. So then this is the next action. So A and D, motors A and D, are gonna go in reverse direction, but do tank move and actually turn a little bit as it's backing. We showed you how to do turning, uh, a gradual turn in a previous tutorial. So go check out that tutorial if you want to learn how to go forward and turn or backwards and turn at the same time. So it's a negative 74 and a negative 42. So it's gonna drag one of the two wheels as it's backing up and it's gonna go that direction for two rotations. And then hit the brakes to stop, right? Yeah. So let's hit the button and let's show you how this works. I'm gonna hold the wall. And there you go. So it runs forward continuously. As a matter of fact, I'll hold this up and I'll show you how far it will go. Because it's in a loop, it's gonna keep doing the command until it hits this bumper. Once it hits the bumper, once it hits the bumper, it goes backwards and then finally stops. But it will not stop going forward multiple times until it you see this bumper, okay? And that's how the loop works. So the loop is going to continually run, continuously each and every time until it hits that wall. 
So if I change this from one to two or two to five or whatever, that's okay. Because right now it's doing the one second command over and over and over and over and over and over again. So let's see that again. So it's running this over and over and over again. You can see here in the green how it's like streaming. That's because that is the function that's operating. One, two, three. It's continually going until you hit that, hit that bumper. And then that bumper sends a signal that says, okay, back up, come out of the loop and go through that loop command. So let's see it again when it hits the wall. So the only bad thing about this version of this command is it has to finish the one second rotation forward before it will get the signal to go backwards. So if it's at the beginning of that one second, it will continually drive into the wall. And sometimes that's not good because it will actually turn the robot. It will turn the robot a little bit if the if the uh, bump sensor or the bump, the touch sensor is offset. So it's gonna continually drive into this wall and run into the wall. That's okay if it's really short like this. If it runs in, it's gonna run flat into the wall. So be cognizant of that and understand that when it runs into the wall like this, and I'll show you it running into the wall like that, that's better than if you had this big plunger out front. If you had this big plunger out front, it's going to turn your robot until it's flat against the wall, until it runs out of steam and then goes and turns backwards. So just be aware of that when you're running into a wall and using the wall as guidance as to where the robot needs to go. So let me give you a scenario. If you wanted to go all the way across an FLL board run into the wall, then back up and, or turn around 360 and then go in a different direction, that would definitely be okay. And you can use the touch sensor to acknowledge that it's hit the wall. Then the operation of turning around or backing up or maybe dropping down the load, whatever the next process is or the next program is, you can use that touch sensor to recognize where it is in on the board and then use that for your trigger to trigger your next command. So scenario number two is when you want to use the touch sensor as the start button. If we want to use the touch sensor to start button, what you want to do is go into your orange flow controls. You want to hit this weight function, bring the weight function over here. So you bring in the weight function. Then we're going to bring in the move function. So the way that the weight flow control works is if I hit this button, it's gonna wait one second. That's what the program is right now. It waits one second, then the, and then it triggers the next command. So you can put those in all throughout your program to put a time gap in between your different programs if you want that. But in our case, we want to use the touch sensor. So we go down here to touch sensor, then change state. So we're going to hit go. Not until I hit this touch sensor will that program operate. And then it's not in a loop, so it won't go multiple times. So let's see it again. So I hit the go button. I hit the button and then it goes, right? The next program that I wanna show you real quick is if I go here, switch. So the switch command also can be based on touch sensor. So you go in here, go to touch sensor, compare and state. And then this also has in it the released, pressed and bumped. So whenever it's in the release state, it's going to do whatever is on the top. And then whenever it changes state, it'll do what's on the bottom, right? Yeah. 
that goes there and that goes here okay so then let's change this a little bit so it's just show a, a different command so either it's going to go forward or it's going to go backwards based on the state of the touch sensor so if i hit go it's going to go forward if i hit go here and the touch sensor is pressed then it goes backwards so you can use this as an if statement so if the button is not pressed, do one. If it is pressed, do two. For instance, you could run into a device that maybe is a crane, right? That you have to hook a motor into with FL. So if you have to run into that crane, hold down the sensor, then have a program that says if the sensor is held down, then operate the crane or operate the motor, right? So that is a different functionality that might, you might need the touch sensor to do or you be utilized for. And it gives you that knowledge that you're pressing up against the wall and then you can do that next statement or that next command based on the function that is pressed up against the wall. You know, and if it backs away from the wall, then if that is the case, then keep running into the wall until it's solid against the wall and then operate your second command. Does that make yeah. sense? So that would be in the case of you have to hit the wall and then do another action or hit a tower or hit a machine within the FL play board. Then you can operate and do that second command. So thanks everybody for watching. If you like this video or if you like the FLL tutorials, please leave a comment and a, a thumbs up down below. If you think that there's another possible reason for using the touch command, leave a comment. We'd love to hear about it. Maybe we'll do another video on other alternative ways of using the touch sensor. And if you like these type of videos, you like the FLL um, tutorials, please subscribe. You'll get a lot more as we put them out. We try to put out a new video every Friday for FLL challenge and giving you the ways of programming your EV3 the best possible way for your particular application. So thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.